Hello everyone and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate Prowler Only. Last time we slayed Valstrax and got into G4 and after a short little break talking about Beast Prowler, we'll be going ahead and taking on more key quests. We've already got our water weapon equipped, which will be great for the next monster we'll be hunting, which is Beware Twin Horns on the Sand, as I was hunting a Diablos in the desert. We'll go ahead and take that quest and head out. All right, our buffs are up and this is a monster we've already fought before once again. Um, similar to Tigrex, very, very, very charge heavy monster, no elements or anything like that. So you're really just dealing with raw damage and dodging single attacks and then countering them once he gets in cooldown. Right now, he's just going to kind of look at us and do a horn flip. We'll actually be out of range of that so we can dodge it. Move up to the right here, there's a bite and a tail. Now the tail is a hitbox on a lot of his attacks. It might not look like it, but if the tail moves even a little bit, it's probably going to actually hurt you. So great swords do not charge immediately behind the tail. He's already in rage mode, which is good. You can see the black smoke coming out of his mouth. Keep going for the stomach there and looks like he's repositioning for a charge. We'll wait for that. Prowlers have a very easy time, especially Braum Prowlers being able to just adept those, but you can also walk out of the way of them pretty easily if you're far enough away. So you can do a double horn flip here, so we'll wait out that and then counter with our boomerangs. Boomerangs are also really good for this monster because you can counter at range. Aim for the stomach with blunt weapons. I don't believe there's really any other good spots. Cutting has at the very least the tail and the stomach. And I think water is good on the um, wings. Of course, in 5th gen, the elements kind of swap, so water is now weaker than ice, and you're using ice a lot more, but in Generations Ultimate, you do use water instead. Dodge forward here and go under that. Very good. Wait and see what he's going to do next. Go for the stomach. Just going to kind of move forward there with a hip check, so we'll be able to punish that stomach a little bit more. Head is not a good hit zone. Unlike in 5th gen, once again, you don't want to go for the head because it's a hard part, and you'll bounce off of it if you hit it. Um, interesting little contrast there and shows a little bit more creativity you have to have when hunting Diablos because you're not just, you know, like with any other monster going for the head. Keep going for the stomach there. Our cat is giving us a go fight win and we have quite a bit of bar gauge so we might look for a chance to throw a Mega Boomerang. He's going to do this. We're very much out of the way of that charge there. Charge is a pretty large hitbox too. Even larger than it looks, so be careful. He's going to do that. I tried to go and do a quick Mega Boomerang, but we did just do a guard cancel, which takes quite a bit to get out of. He's going to charge again, so we'll just dodge into it, and then we'll throw another one. If he turns around and charges at us, he's not. He's going to dig here, so unfortunately a bit of a waste, but it's fine. Wait for him to do his digging attack. You'll see the puffs, and he just jumped out there. He didn't actually attack from it, so that's good. Be able to apply our boomerangs here, and then we'll go for that stomach. Of course, if you attack the legs enough, they'll get a trip which is very nice. Another thing I did neglect to mention, and we can't do it anymore since the rock is broken, but when the rock is not broken, you can actually get Diablos' horn stuck in it if it charges at it. It's a pretty good chance, and like we had before, where we had a bunch of bar gauge for Mega Boomerangs, we could have actually used that to our advantage. This is the dodge there in the roar. That's fine, though. I'm sure he's fixing to leave areas at some point. Maybe. He's going to bite there, so we'll be able to counter that. Get an exhaustion flinch, so that's pretty nice. And you'll still be able to get stuns on the head, but since it's just not great for damage, you're not going to be getting very many stuns because you're not, you know, trying for it. Be losing out on a lot more damage going for a stun than you would if you just attacked regularly. All right, he ran away exhausted, so he's going to go ahead and go for some cacti here. We'll wait for him to pop out of the ground before we actually get something ready. And since he's going to mosey on over that way anyways, we'll do a long throw here and try to aim that correctly. I uh, didn't really intend to throw that at his face, but we get a stun anyways. So thankfully we didn't actually have to, you know, waste too much damage on that. And then we'll be able to go for the stomach here. We get a back break there, very nice. Unfortunately do not have enough for our um, piercing boomerang. So we'll have to do some melee attacks here. He's gonna do an exhaustion taunt there. So we'll be able to back up and throw a couple more boomerangs. Probably gonna do a tackle. Nope, just digging, so that'll be fine for us. We will just kind of attack there. We'll go ahead and throw another Mega Boomerang out since we do have the bar for it. It's going to look at us again. It's going to do a charge. Didn't get a flinch off of it. I was waiting to see if that was going to happen, but it didn't. We'll go for these legs here. Try to do a little bit closer combat since he is exhausted, and we'll be able to get a lot more spins off and by proxy more damage. A couple more Boomerangs here into a spin. And we'll try to go for this leg. Get a flinch, so that's pretty nice. One, two, into a spin. He's gonna dig. 
The dig does wind press as soon as he goes underground, so don't be too close to it if you don't want to be stunned by that, but he can't really attack immediately, so you should be fine. All right, go for another spin here on the legs. Eventually, we will get a knockdown. It just takes a bit sometimes. All right, he's doing the double horn sweep there into a spin. He's once again underground. And if you see the dust cloud kind of gathering like that, that means he's fixing to attack. So just kind of sheathe your weapon and run around. Or if you're a prowler, just, you know, run with your weapon unsheathed. Very nice movement option cats get. Double horn sweep. And try to close some distance with our lunge and maybe go into the leg there. I did not orient the um, controller directly or correctly, not directly. I mean, I guess that could work too. He's digging once again. Another puff, so we will just kind of move, not get ready for an attack. That was the lunge attack from him. A lot faster than just his regular charge, and it can catch you off guard. Get a flinch there, still not getting a topple. We'll get hit by the tail sweep there too, but that should be fine. All right, double tails or horn sweep. Technically a tail sweep too, just kind of a body sweep. All right, good. Dodge the tackle there. He's probably going to go for another one. Actually, completely go under the hitbox there, which is pretty nice. Throw another boomerang there. Judge off to the right there. That way we can counter him easily once more. Didn't actually get the adept dodge there. Very interesting. A couple more boomerangs here, and we'll wait for him to come out. All right. Since he's in cooldown now, we're going to go ahead and throw this out. Hopefully he does another charge. Okay. Nope. Oh, we get a topple. I'm going to take that very nicely. And go for the stomach again with another Mega Boomerang. Very nice. And looks like he's going to change areas once more. Get a nice horn break there. Very good. We're still waiting for him to limp, though. He's not quite at that level yet, but he should be pretty soon. I don't believe he has as much health as Valstrax, which is a pretty simple hunt to take down. Especially compared, or not compared to Diablos. Diablos is somewhat easier because Valstrax is an Elder Dragon. He is enraged, though, so we'll see what he's going to do next. We can do some horn sweep, so we'll just kind of get away. We will throw a mega boomerang here since we do just kind of have, have, have some bar gauge to spare. Throw that at him. He's going to do another horn sweep. Get a little closer. We'll do a spin on him as he turns towards us. And melee spins are not as great on this monster since his weak spot is up in the air and you can't really reach that. But if you're trying to go for those topples, you know, that is a decent thing to do. Get another stun, I believe. Yeah, uh, very surprising we actually see two stuns in the hunt, but these Mega Boomerangs are really putting in work. Since these Boomerangs can do stun damage, um, that's, I assume, why they nerfed them compared to the cutting Mega Boomerangs, which I guess is fair, kinda, but not really. It's not really, you know, that much of a game changer to have stun on the Boomerang. There we go, he's finally limping now. Probably gonna be a little over 15 minutes for this hunt, but that's just because we're hitting the head quite a bit. He's a very similar monster to Glavinus, where he turns his head to you a lot, and if you're aiming for a certain part of his body, like the stomach, if he turns his head towards you, you're gonna hit it a lot. All right, final little showdown here. Unfortunately, I did miss the Mega Boomerang opener, but that's fine. Not the complete end of the world. He's gonna taunt here, so we'll be able to go for that nice juicy stomach, and then he's going to start digging. Um, not too terrible to actually have him dig in this game of course in monster hunter one and even like up to freedom you not they're not very friendly when they dig because especially with cephadrome they'll just kind of stay there and the only way you can really force them out of the ground is if you have a sonic bomb and even then if they're enraged sonic bombs don't work so you're kind of just at their mercy um again it really is not very prone to digging i say as he digs once more uh, compared to those older games because those older games it could just be a combo of digging for like 30 minutes straight which is not very fun it's gonna taunt here once more so we'll be able to kind of punish him there he did get flinched as well so we'll be able to go for another little combo there it's gonna do a tackle punish that as he turns towards us and then here comes another tackle once more and what's he gonna do next okay he's gonna do these horn sweeps so we're pretty fine to just kind of keep going for that stomach He's going to do more horn sweeps, so that's good. Actually, I had a range of that horn sweep there, so we could have just kind of kept attacking, but it's fine. Going for the stomach. I'm going to do a tackle there. And here comes another tackle. Very good. 
It's going to go after our cat now, which is fine. We'll be able to get a Mega Boomerang out. Hopefully he looks towards us and not our cat. Where are you going? Why are you heading towards the edge of the zone? That is a very low power Mega Boomerang. Um, I don't think he's leaving. I don't know why he would leave. I guess he's leaving. Okay, then. He's exhausted once more. Just kind of sitting over there, but there are no cacti in the zone that he can eat. So not sure why he immediately just left. Normally, they'll at the very least stay in the nest zone a little longer. So just a little weird quirk of the eye, eye this episode. And there we go. Diablos is down. I'll go ahead and carve him up and meet you back at base. Something else I uh, forgot. Apparently, I didn't save before the last episode ended and I just exited the game and we do not have our Valstrax equipment anymore. I just completely had forgot about that. Other way, Diablos equipment, 146. Not as good as Valstrax. Again, Valstrax is an Elder Dragon, so he's going to have some pretty good armor. As for the weapon, Diablos Hammer Cross. Blue sharpness, 250 melee attack and 226 boomerang attack. Very, 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 very high raw and pretty good if you're going for pure bombing at this point in the game. However, there is some negative affinity, but again, that doesn't affect bombs. And since pretty much all other playstyles use element anyways, it's not the end of the world. Let me go ahead and actually make the Valstrax equipment now so we have more defense and then we'll get on to our next quest. All right, now that we're suited up in actual good equipment, I mean, not that the stuff before was bad, we'll go ahead and take our next quest. This quest is called Tracing the Family Tree and has us hunting a Tigrex in the Primal Forest. We'll go ahead and head out. All right, our best are up and G-Rank Tigrex is not a thing to play around with. I highly, highly recommend Adept Prowlers for this and just Adept, you know, style in general because in, when he gets to enraged mode, he is incredibly fast, deals massive amounts of damage, and now has a homing charge that is not easily avoidable. You really have to set up to dodge it, and if you're having to set up to actually dodge it, you're not dealing as much damage in the process. You're gonna see what he does here. He's not quite in enrage mode yet, which is fine with us. Throw a couple at the face here. He's gonna do a double chomp, so we'll just dodge straight through that and go behind him. Getting behind Tigrex is a pretty nice thing to be able to do, especially because he does have to do those head turns. He's going to roar here as he has reached enrage mode. And remember that roar does damage if you're close enough. He's going to do a top there. Here comes the charge. Did not have enough. <laughs> Got to get out of his wheelhouse here before we actually start taking damage. Throw a boomerang here. He's going to tackle. He's going to turn around. That is the kind of homing charge there. He was aiming at our friend there, Benkai. And he didn't actually hit us, thankfully, but we're fine. Throw a couple of boomerangs at the tail here while he is not looking at us. And then he's going to do that. Probably going to just do another attack really quickly. Boulder toss. Two boomerangs here. Another tackle. I did not press the button fast enough there to actually dodge. It's fine. We're not taking as much damage as I was afraid we would be. Dodge under that charge there. Here comes the kind of homing charge again. I think that's the homing charge. There's a very unique animation for it. So I think we'll actually see that later on. I'm getting a little too greedy. I need to only throw one boomerang after he finishes something because he can come at you very fast if you're very close to him. A couple more boomerangs at the tail while he taunts here, and then he's going to do a head turn, so we'll attack him there. He's just going to tackle, so we'll be able to just kind of, you know, punish that, and then now he is flying to the next area. All right, we've got go fight win active, so we'll look for a chance to throw a mega boomerang. This might be a little bit too greedy here. He's going to do a melee spin, but we actually got the flinch off. That's very nice. We'll get away from him. He's going to do a double bite there. So we'll throw a couple of boomerangs here, reapply our piercing, and then wait for him to attack. It's a turnaround boulder swipe, showing that he doesn't always do head turns. Does a hop there, so we'll punish that. He's doing another turnaround head charge. Be able to keep going for that face there. Ball rotten under him. He's doing a jump back. He's not enraged quite yet, though. Wait for him to attack here. Double bot. Be able to punish that pretty easily. And we might even go for a claw break at some point and get that topple. He's back into Enrage mode, and Enrage is a pretty easy spot to actually throw a Mega Boomerang. Unfortunately, I just didn't realize I had Go Fight Win active. Throw a couple of Boomerangs here. He's going to do a Boulder Toss there, so we'll get behind him. Double Bite. A couple more Boomerangs this way. All right, here comes another Charge. Hopefully, he doesn't turn that around. He did. I did just gamble on that, unfortunately. Okay, he's taunting here, so maybe we can get this off. There are some specific attack combos that will guarantee he turn or he does a um, taunt at the end of it, if I can find my words. So remember what those do, like this here. It was another one that he had to taunt afterwards. And we're going to actually get Mega Boomerangs ready. 
That way we can toss them out. I'm not going to do it here. Just a little bit too greedy if I do it now. Dodge under that little leap. And if he does another one, we'll know he will taunt. Yes. Okay. That double bounce is something that I believe even in um, Freedom You Not he had. Nice subquest complete there, showing we did break the claws and we get another flinch. A couple of boomerangs at the face. Just a single bot there, so we'll throw a couple more. Get a face break. Very nice. It comes just okay. He's leaving the area. I'm fine with that. We'll go ahead and chase him on to the next one. All right, in area three now, he's just going to taunt. So we'll throw a couple of boomerangs at the arm here. Maybe get a trout or a trip. I was trying to say topple and trip at the same time. He's actually eating the slag toth there. So we can actually throw a mega boomerang and maybe get a flinch out of it. If we get the flinch, we'll probably throw him into um, exhaustion mode. And if we don't, let's find two, I guess. We're probably not going to get it. It doesn't look like we will. Yeah, no, probably not going to get it. Unfortunately, this weapon isn't too terribly high on raw. We actually did get the flinch finally there, but it was too late. Um, this is a more higher element weapon, and that is how the um, Astalos weapons are. They're more focused on higher element than higher raw, which kind of makes them bad balance wise or in a balanced way. Not really bad balance wise. They're decent. You know, they're not as good as I believe the um, white Fatalis rod, which would be our final thunder weapon that we would be going for. But as a, you know, next step on the power train, it's not terrible. He's just going to taunt again, so we'll be able to get some damage off here. We will try to go for our piercing boomerangs. He's going to do a turnaround charge. Means we'll be able to punish with this. And this is where the adept just comes in very nicely. You can easily get behind him if he's doing a tackle and you just adept it. He's going to roar here. We are in range of the roar. I was gambling on whether or not we were it. And we were. Throw a boomerang there go off to the left just the leap if he turns around and does another one we know he's going to taunt and he does another one so we know he's going to taunt a couple of boomerangs here we'll do a lunge into a spin on the leg not getting any topples but that's fine he's gonna do another jump back so we'll see what attack he pulls out of it just a boulder toss that's pretty fun and that boulder toss again does have element effects if it is near something like ice or lava i don't Oh, if Tigrex can actually be in a lava area in this game? Probably. Actually, in Eagle Isle. Um, I don't know if he actually has the lava throw, though. I think he does. I know for sure he has the ice ones because of the um, polar field. Wait and see what he does next. All right, he's just tackling here. Hopefully, we will be fine. He's just kind of circling around us. This is the one that's easy to avoid because you just walk in one direction and you should be able to just run out of the way of it. All right, there's a the lunge. Be able to counter that. And he's just comboing it into a tackle there, so we're fine. He's jumping backwards once again, so we'll wait and throw these two out. Make sure they're hovering and then be able to dodge. A couple more boomerangs here while he does his head turn. He's running into the wall. That's fine with me, I think. Not really the end of the world when he does that. Keep going for the arm here. We get a flinch. That's nice. We'll go for the face now. It's going to do a head turn. Get out of the way of that. It's a very positioning based fight if you don't have an adept. Um, ability. He's doing a taunt there and we go for his face that throws him into enrage mode. We get another flinch and I did not cancel my actions in time so we are going to get punished for that. But I was trying to capitalize on that roar animation there and go into a mega boomerang but we did get that flinch there unfortunately. A couple more boomerangs here. He's going to jump. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, he's tackling. That doesn't really mean anything that you can actually combo off of. There's a bite, so we'll go ahead and throw this out here. Come on, go, go, go. Okay, I'm fine with that, even if I get hit. If he turns around and does another jump, though, we're in the clear to throw a free Mega Boomerang and get quite a bit of damage off. If we get a flinch there, this will maybe make sure our next one goes off. We'll probably take some damage. Nope, he gets flinched again, and we cut the tail. Very, very, very nice. We apply our piercing boomerangs, throw a boomerang at the face, dodge the boulders, move forward, double bite. Go for the arms. Another spin on the face as he turns towards us. Wait for the bite there. Throw a couple of melee attacks out into the boomerang, and he is going to leave the area. All right, he is exhausted now, so remember when he tries to do a turnaround charge, he will fall over like here. And then you'll be able to combo on the head pretty easily. Don't go to where the head is immediately after it falls over because it will move a little bit to where he's just kind of sprawled out there. We'll be able to combo on the head. Um, I've never seen that happen before. That, <laughs> I did not expect Tyrex to just teleport. 
after walking into a wall, but I guess that can happen. There we go, finally limping away. Just pretty much playing a cat and mouse game of running around, except they're kind of both cats. I don't know if Tigrex is actually really a cat, like Tiger T-Rex, but it's also pronounced T-Rex sometimes, occasionally, I don't know. Uh, we did lose two acorns on the process, just showing how difficult he actually is if you're being greedy. His attacks are centered a little in front of him, especially with his charges, so you can't just away immediately before his visual hitbox hits you. You actually have to dodge a little before. And since I was, you know, just recently playing Beast Prowler, I'm so used to actually having to time my dodges instead of just, you know, waiting for it to hit me during the whole animation that I was just waiting a little too long, like here. Wait and see what he does next. Going to turn around and look at us into a bounce. Ooh, this looks like maybe another bounce. Nope. Going to finish that pretty quickly, so we'll be able to wait this out. Holder toss. Couple of boomerangs here. Another jump. Maybe this is the double one. Nope. Just another boulder toss. Going to wait for that chance to actually have a cooldown. Unfortunately, get hit by that right claw there. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Use this anger iframe, and then we'll be able to punish him as he turns around and maybe comes towards us. Oh, no, he's limping. Spin on that leg there, maybe get a topple. If not, that's fine. I believe he does sleep in area nine usually. Of course, we're not going to wait for him to sleep because he is going to be in the perfect spot for us to throw a mega boomerang. And I think, oh, that'll be better. Never mind. He's very, very fast. Like I said before, don't do not let your guard down against this monster. It's very easy to get likes with them and then just completely get destroyed like we have here. A couple of boomerangs into a spin, and there we go. He is down. Not even 20 minutes. I thought that would take a little longer, but nope. Even in suboptimal gear, we're doing pretty decently for, you know, a solo player. Either way, like before, I'll cover him up and meet you back at base. All right, back to the hub. We'll go ahead and look at the Tigrex equipment. It's not going to be as high raw or have as high raw as the um, Diablo's equipment. But it does have white sharpness, making it a little bit better for, you know, regular melee and just things that use more sharpness things, um, if that makes any sense. Affinity is not good, though, at negative 5 and negative 10, even after the current buffs we have, and only 225 melee. So up to you if you want to use it. I don't really recommend it that much. As for the armor, it is only 142, so actually less than all the rarity tin stuff. Um, very interesting that Tigrex is considered weaker than Diablos, even though a lot of times they're pretty much in the same tier, but Diablos was new to Generations Ultimate, so I think they really wanted to kind of pump Diablos up there. Either way, we'll go ahead and take on our next quest, and that next quest will be Devil Joe Hunt, as is hunting a Devil Joe in the jungle. I'll go ahead and take it and we'll head out. All right, the breaths are up and Devil Joe is enraged. Keep a very safe distance from this guy. Unlike Tigrex and Diablos that we've been playing pretty decently close to against, this guy does not really have any good hit zones on the ground. So going for your melee spins aren't going to be that great. Since we don't have the Shigaru weapon, we're going to just be using Thunder Element. I believe they're both equal in terms of weakness so not that bad but the shigaru weapon i think is just better especially compared to you know the thunder weapons that are going to be the best at this time which you won't really have access to um your absolute very best thunder weapon i believe is not unlockable until hr 75 or hr 100 one of the two um of course if you have other hunters you can join a white fatalis hunt we'll be talking more about that later but for now, we're focusing on hunting Devil Joe here. When he's enraged, go for that back. That is a very good hit zone. And of course, if you want the talons, this is another hunt to go after them for. Um, I believe we actually have enough to make the talons if I haven't already. I don't think I have. Yeah, we still need to make the power talon or the armor talons. So maybe we'll get the fang or the claws from this hunt. Or, you know, the talons, you know what it's actually called, not a claw or a fang. Gonna get greedy there and actually get hit. That's why you want to stay at range. Got that tail sweep there, and that tail sweep is incredibly large. Very similar to Plesioth and how large his attacks are. Um, he does have a hip check, though it isn't as bad as Plesioth's. At the very least, it's not as shocking. You know, you expect it to go pretty far because Devil Joe is a very large creature. Throw a couple of boomerangs there. He'll do that hip check very nicely. We'll go for the face there and back up. 
get hit by the bite there unfortunately and that will knock us down out of our acorn but that's fine not the complete end of the world looks like he's exhausted already and he's going for some food we'll be able to pierce this mega boomerang all the way down his body which will be pretty nice not terrible hit zones down the body i do believe his back is not a great spot if he's not enraged so don't go for that just go for the face and that's what we'll be aiming for while he just kind of chows down here on this aptonoth uh he's gonna swing his head around enough to our boomerangs miss but that's fine he'll roar we'll get the dodge on it two boomerangs there he's gonna do a sweeping dragon blast this is a very weird attack with a very weird hitbox so be careful for it it kind of is a pinpoint attack but it's weird you get the feel for it once you actually do hunt him but until then it's just like is this going to actually hit me or not it's very similar to rathalos's little flamethrower in the air that he does here comes a wide sweeping one so we'll just easily dodge into that and then throw a boomerang out here comes the hip check we'll dodge a couple more boomerangs here he gonna do next another wide sweeping dragon blast dodge into it very nice boomerang out we'll hit the tail which is fine there's another slam there so that's good comes another dragon blast upwards just dodge that in case it does actually hit us we'll go for that tail Couple more boomerangs at the face he will do a stomp on binkai there it did not pin him though that stomp will pin you if you do get hit by it Keep going for the tail there. Go for the face now that it's faced towards us. Swing at us. I thought he would cancel that because I was expecting Diablo stuff. I should not have expected Diablo stuff. Got go fight win. We'll try to go for Mega Boomerang here. Maybe he'll be generous and let us get it out. It looks like he will be. Even if we take damage though, that's fine. We get that attack out. And he's actually going to give her a stomp there. We'll get a flinch too, which will be perfect for us to throw another Mega Boomerang out. Get a face break. Very nice. We'll just go for that face while he's just kind of flinched there. Unfortunately, dodged way, way, way too early and then just panic dodge once again to try to get through that hitbox. It's fine though. We'll go through the dragon blast. Fire big boomerangs and our piercing. Not yet. We'll wait for him to maybe transition. Okay, I thought he was going to a different area. Dodge that tail sweep there. Dodge it again. Very nice. Go for that back. He's going to do these sweeps. Remember, they actually happened three times. Tried to get the dodge off there, unfortunately did not happen. I was just in the middle of swinging my sword. Okay, here comes another dragon blast. So we'll go for the tail here with some melee attacks. Get a spin on it. Here comes a stomp. Dodge the trimmer. Go for the back now that it's in clear view once more. Dodge into these sweeps. Stay at range. Make sure we're not in the range of the tail hitbox either. All right, looks like he's doing his upward blasts again. So we'll wait. He's actually aiming at Binkai here, so we'll get free shots on the legs. All right, let's see what he's going to do. Here comes some swings. He's once again exhausted. Devil Joe very often gets exhausted, and that's kind of his mechanic, because the saliva will apply the fence down if you get hit by it. Thankfully, we can play at a decent enough range where we shouldn't be getting hit by it, as long as we're not too greedy, of course. So we're pretty fine to avoid that. And there's a tail cut. Very nice. Just kind of a slow hunt here honestly especially compared to the tiger x you know we're playing at range and just attacking him when he's off cooldown or whiffing attacks like here we've got nine bars of gauge i might try to look into actually throwing a mega boomerang at some point this might be a good position to do that in okay he's gonna hop go ahead and dodge out of the way throw a mega boomerang come on there we go he's gonna throw a boulder at us that's fine and he'll roar at us go ahead and throw another mega boomerang and maybe lead that into him there uh maybe come on move a little forward never mind didn't quite work out there oh well one more boomerang there he's gonna throw some boulders forward a couple more boomerangs at the face more upward blasts just kind of dodge around him there make sure we're not getting too greedy in front of his face even though that is a very nice hit zone try to hover these boomerangs around in case he does turn towards us very nice we'll throw one more boomerang He's going to tackle forward and stomp. We were out of the range of the stomp, though, so that's pretty good. Move around to the back here. He's going to do another wide sleep sweeping dragon blast, and we'll be able to counter that with a mega boomerang. He's going to move forward probably towards our cats. Never mind. He's just doing another dragon blast. We'll be able to spin on the leg here. Get a flinch, not a topple, but that's fine. Still be able to continue some things off of it. Here comes another dragon breath upwards. Couple more boomerangs here as he turns around towards us. Here comes a sweep. 
Uh, didn't really mean to do a soothing roll there, but that's fine. He's once again exhausted, just showing how often he does become exhausted. And there's a flinch, very good. Keep going for that face. He did bite us there, but we're fine. We do have defense down, so we'll heal that off. We don't really want to have that. I believe Devil Joe is one of the monsters where you get two tail carves. Again, I've probably said that before because we have fought Devil Joe before, but it is a good thing to know. Comes a double sweep there with his mouth and his tail. He's going to bite with his saliva, and then we'll move off to the right there and counter. Okay, here comes another boulder toss. Couple boomerangs at the face. We'll throw one more. Really not judging my range correctly here and staying way too close to where he can actually attack. Couple more boomerangs this way. Here comes a boulder toss. Couple more boomerangs. Move to the right. Two more onto the leg. Or try to get close to the leg at the very least. All right, there we go. Good. Couple more boomerangs at the back there in the tail. See what he does next. I'm having you soothing girl a little too often here. He's not aiming in a particularly great direction, and we'll be able to throw this Mega Boomerang out. Hopefully he turns around and runs towards us. That's what I'm aiming on. There we go. Good. Little greedy there, but we were in the sweet spot where we weren't getting hit by the tail or the face. Keep going for that tail while it's in front of us. There's the face now. Here comes the double sweep. Onto the legs. We aim for the legs when they're the easiest because they are a um, good chance to topple if we do get that. And since we're not really going to be hit the head while it's moving around very much anyways, we might as well be trying to go for some extra damage later on. A couple of boomerangs here. Does another sweep, so we'll be able to counter that once more. Two more boomerangs. Another boomerang at the face. Dodge left. A couple of boomerangs here. Here comes the roar. Unfortunately, again, just kind of panic dodge there and did not work out very well for me. Here comes a dragon blast, so we'll just wait for it to go past. Throw a boomerang at his face. Go ahead and soothing roll. Get rid of that defense down. Wait for him to dragon blast upwards. Go ahead and apply big boomerangs. Wait for the boulder toss. And then go for the face. All right. He's going to stomp there. I thought I was going to be trimmer. That's why I didn't aim my boomerang correctly. That's that sweep. Get it range and we'll throw a mega boomerangs. So we do have go fight win now. I'm going to aim for him walking towards us. And he will. He'll actually sweep, which makes it easier to hit. Unfortunately, I did just, you know... Do a greedy boomerang there. A couple more at the tail. Missed both of them. That was not great. Throw some more at the face. He's going to throw a boulder out, so that's good. Try to get a little closer since we are missing quite a bit. All right. Dodge that dragon blast. I'm missing a lot of boomerangs here. There we go. A couple more there. Wide sleeping blast. Throw a couple at the leg here. Into a spin. Very nice. Here comes the hit check. Do another spin on his leg. Only get a little bit of damage off, though. Here comes a stomp. I'm gonna try to counter that with a Mega Boomerang. He should maybe look at us. So we'll try to angle that downwards to where it'll hit his body. Okay, walk forward a little bit, and that should come back into him. No, he does that perfectly. <laughs> Not great, but oh well. A couple of Boomerangs at the leg. He's gonna roar. There we go. We finally get the roar timing correct there. One, two. Here comes a Dragon Blast. Just dodge that in case it would hit us. Couple of boomerangs there. We get a flinch. Very nice. He's biting there. Another flinch. Very good. Here comes a stomp. Get another flinch. Very good. Couple of boomerangs at the face. He's doing a sweep. I did not think that would hit me. Um, that was very interesting. All right, we'll wait here. Dodge that stomp there. Actually, that is surprising. Yeah, <laughs> it's another thing where I'm just pressing B a little bit too late. Where I'm. I don't know if there's a bit of delay or if it's just, I don't know. It just feels weird. You'll press the B button and that's just how the game is. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny smidgen of delay. And even whenever I, you know, actually played on the other save the other day, just a small amount of delay that makes sure you have to kind of plan in advance. But that's kind of always been a monster hunter thing where you got to plan your attacks and dodges out correctly. Get a nice flinch there once more and he is poisoned. So that's nice. He's still not quite limping away yet, so I guess I will meet you when he does limp away. All right, he finally did limp away. I was hoping he would sleep here, and I waited a little bit longer to maybe, you know, let that happen, but it is not quite going to happen yet. He's exhausted, though, so we'll try to throw a Mega Boomerang out here. Should get this off. We didn't hit him by that, you know, turnaround attack. Very nice. He's going to throw a boulder there, so we'll be able to just kind of dodge around. Dodge a stomp there. We'll go for big boomerangs. 
Very good. She's just going to sweep around once again. That tackle actually does damage, surprisingly, at the very least a little bit. So we were able to dodge it. Unfortunately, get hit by the roar once again. Just not great at timing that, apparently. And he is now limping away once more. Um, curious if he's actually leaving the area or if he's just repositioning. He's now leaving the area once again. Not even going to bother letting him sleep since this has gone on long enough and we should be fine. I'm not really too afraid of fainting at all. And even then, we still have two other faints. So <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Try to dodge here. There we go. Good. A couple of boomerangs this way. See what he does next. Okay. Double sweep. Go for that leg. Keep going for the leg. And now wait and see what he's going to do next. Okay. Just some sweeping. That's fine. Be in that sweet spot so we can actually keep countering. Does a turn around attack, but that's good. And he'll stomp. Great. He's going to kind of just stand there and taunt. So we'll try to go for these arms here. Unfortunately, just don't really reach. Like I said before, he doesn't have the best lowdown hit zones. Either way, that boomerang finished it off, and we will go ahead and carve Devil Joe up and meet you back at base. All right, now that we're back in the hub, we'll go ahead and look at that equipment. First up is the weapon, the Vangus Mace Cross. 200 melee attack and 20 melee dragon. That is not terrible. Um, not the best thing in the world, but at this point in time, it's going to be your best dragon weapon for melee users. And also not terrible affinity. 181 boomerang attack makes us not great and only 12 boomerang dragon is also not terribly good so you won't be using this for boomerangs as for the armor exactly the same as the vow strike stuff just with separate resistances and there we go there's three hunts completed in g4 and we only have three left until the final boss either way i hope you enjoyed if you did please consider leaving a comment below and maybe even consider subscribing until next time bye